third inductee was a gentleman that I knew well and was honored by that friendship, Mr. Bill Strode. Bill Strode was a storyteller whose medium was photography. And for anybody who exemplified perhaps our most distinguished academic program at WKU, photojournalism, it would be Bill Strode. His images and their impact are important parts of Kentucky's history. After graduating from WKU in 1959, Bill Strode embarked on a career with the Courier Journal, a career that would forever change the newspaper's reputation for photojournalism. During his time with the Courier Journal, Strode and his staff shared two Pulitzer Prizes, one for public service in 1967 for a series of reports about strip mining in eastern Kentucky, and one for future photography in 1976 for coverage of the court ordered busing in Jefferson County. Bill Strode's legacy will live on not only in the photos he left, but in the future generations of students that he helped shape and inspire. As an adjunct faculty member in WKU's photojournalism program in the mid-1970s, and that's where I came to know him, he was instrumental in helping WKU train and inspire top quality photojournalists. After leaving the Courier Journal, Bill Strode went on to a highly successful freelance career that led to his photos being published in National Geographic, Time Magazine, Life Magazine, Sports Illustrated, Esquire, The New York Times, The Washington Post, and the list goes on and on and on. In 1978, he founded his own uh, photography company, William Strode Associates, and in 1984, he co-founded a publishing company, Harmony House Publications, which specializes in photographic books. Bill Strode became a member of the National Press Photographers Association in 1957 and received numerous honors and accolades from that organization, including being named Region 4 Newspaper Photographer of the Year four consecutive years from 1964 to 1967. He won the NPBA's Joseph Costa Award in 1992, received a Morris Berman Citation in 1967, and won its President's Award in 1965. Our next inductee, Mr. Bill Strode. Bill Strode was a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning photographer, but he was much, much more. Bill wanted things to be simple. He wanted every place to be home. He wanted everybody to be a member of the family. He wanted to be engaging with the whole world. And uh, uh, Bill loved people and he loved life. Business partner and longtime friend Joe Paul Pruitt knew Strode as a man passionate about his work and his life. His love for photography began early in life and saw him come to Western Kentucky University, where he began working on the College Heights Herald. It was here that his ideas about journalism and photography began to take root. Photographers didn't just take pictures, they were journalists and they had a story to tell. Jane Vance, Kentucky Poet Laureate and companion of Strode. Yeah, he said, I, I'm a storyteller, and that's what makes a good picture of the kind he took, photojournalistic pictures, being able to tell the story in, in a single image. And by the way, Bill was a wonderful writer as well, but he had the capacity to get those emotions into words as well as into his images. Strode began working at the Courier Journal in 1960 and quickly became a standout photographer for the paper. His work in Vietnam and the Eastern Kentucky coal fields garnered him praise and his first joint Pulitzer. He loved the land and he loved the people of the land. And he was passionate about the strip mining abuses that happened in East Kentucky. And his photography showed that. And he was passionate about uh, all kinds of uh, environmental issues. Vietnam was an issue that divided this country in the mid 60s and I think as a responsible journalist he wanted to be on the front lines uh, in that regard. I think Bill Strode 
did some of the finest work of any newspaper photographer in Vietnam that ever came out of that entire conflict. He took Vietnam and he took, he took the war and he, he personalized it. Bill Lester was a friend and co-worker at the Courier Journal. Strode was known for his ability to blend into a situation and to gain the trust of the subjects he was shooting. He had the capacity to understand his subjects and to convey that understanding to them so that they open themselves up to him. You can't be a good photographer if people are feeling, if your subjects are feeling defensive against you. And he had a wonderful way of of making people know that who they are was just fine and that that's what he wanted to, to photograph. Bill Strode went on to photograph the volatile court-ordered busing in Louisville in 1976 and was part of another Pulitzer Prize winning team that documented that turbulent era. In 1977, he left the Courier and freelanced for National Geographic, Life, Time, Esquire and others. But the life of a globe-trotting photojournalist wasn't for him. He wanted to stay close to his family and photograph the state that he loved. He wanted to bring the principles of being a photojournalist to the next generation of photographers through workshops and classes. His legacy, uh, in addition to being a great photographer and a good editor, Bill was a terrific teacher. Uh, Bill worked uh, as an instructor at the Missouri Photo Workshops uh, at the University of Missouri for years and years and years. And I think his work there might be his finest legacy because um, he instructed tons of individuals in the photojournalism that he perfected. And uh, I think that might be his best legacy. There were many sides to Bill Strode and many people who loved and admired him. To, to me, the, the thing about him that captured my heart was that he, he was so alive to what was going on around him. He, he relished every minute of his life. The spirituality of all of life was something that attracted him. And it was the inner drive in his life that never died. That was what gave him life. It, it was what propelled him to do his work, was his uh, appreciation of beauty. Strode went on to establish Harmony House Publications, where he and partner Joe Paul Pruitt put out stunning tabletop books on horse racing and various other subjects. Bill's ability to tell stories were connected to the picture. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. And he could present the sequence of pictures logistically in a book and stylistically on the pages in such a way that uh, one would get it, one would see it, one would apprehend it, one would appreciate it. Professionally, Strode's work was recognized as he was the National Press Photographer's Newspaper Photographer of the Year in 1966 and was the Region 4 Newspaper Photographer of the Year four consecutive times. You know, he won a Pulitzer Prize. He was Newspaper Photographer of the Year, which is very hard to do. And at the same time, he came back the next year and he was a runner-up as Newspaper Photographer of the Year. That's unheard of. I mean, he did, he did, what he did best and did it very, very well. Strode was diagnosed with cancer and died in May of 2006, but his legacy lives on in the students that he taught, the images that he left behind, and the love that he shared. He was a person of great, energetic, loving spirit, and I, I do think it made him the master of, of his calling, which was photography, and his other calling, which was friendship and connection, solid, long-lasting connections with people. I, I would say to Bill, thank you for the life you live, for being our friend, and for allowing all of us, watch and all, to be ourselves. And we not only love the man with the gift, 
We love the map of the hall. 2008 Hall of Distinguished Alumni inductee, Bill Strode. It is an honor uh, to induct Mr. Bill Strode into the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. Bill Strode passed away on May 15, 2006. Accepting the honor on his behalf and behalf of the Strode family, his close friend and current Kentucky Poet Laureate, Ms. Jane Gentry Vance, is my honor to induct Bill Strode into the WKU Hall of Distinguished Alumni. Jane? As you know from seeing that wonderful video, thanks for that, about Bill, you know that he loved life, and in particular, he loved his own life. Bill thought he was one of the luckiest people in the whole world. To him, his life was its own reward. He was modest to a fault, but had won many honors, as you've heard, for his deeply human art, for that work that he did in photojournalism. He felt privileged to have had the superb training, the, the solid foundation that he got for that work here at Western Kentucky University. And he was always thankful for the fortunate gift that he knew he had been given of a sure eye and a quick finger on the shutter. His induction into the Western Kentucky University Hall of Distinguished Alumni would have been a more meaningful honor to him than any of the others. His years at Western were among the happiest of his life. Here in Bowling Green, he came into himself as a person as well as, as a photographer. Here he found friends who were friends for a lifetime and discovered brotherhood in the best and most personal sense of that word. Through Sigma Phi Alpha, later the Sigma Chi's, many of whom are here today, and that would have delighted Bill, he learned how to have fun. He learned how to dance other than whooping around a, ca a campfire. He learned how to love friends and how to navigate the waters of independence and of learning that he had never experienced before. He always credited Western and its outstanding journalism department with giving him the skills both human and journalistic, which were his hallmark as a photographer as well as as a writer. He loved to tell the story of going to President Kelly Thompson while he was a student here to pitch the need for a real dark room for the journalism school and the College Heights Herald. I know that he must have described to President Thompson how after dances and football games, he and his roommate, Don Gerard, who is right here, would rush back to East Hall and keeping everybody else out, which after a night of drinking was not a popular action, they would barricade themselves in the men's restroom uh, and keep everybody else out to make it a dark room so that the pictures could be developed for the paper the next morning. His argument to the president was persuasive, and by the time Bill graduated in 1959, there was a, a dark room, a proper dark room. He went on from Western to live a rich life, a life full of love, and of the sorrows that make up most of our lives. Above all, Bill loved his family. Nothing was dearer to him than his four children, each of whom in different ways carries him on into the future. He loved his friends, many of whom are here today. Don, Jerry Wilder, who, who nominated Bill for this great honor, Danny Wedge, Alan Fryrear, who at the last minute couldn't come today, and I think also of his dear friend, uh, Carl Weiss, who died shortly after Bill died in 2006. 
Bill loved his house in Goshen, Kentucky, right outside of Louisville. He's the only man I ever knew who clipped recipes and loved many of the details of housekeeping. And I think he was most at home on his hilly six acres there in Goshen, ripping around on his tractor mower so fast that his sparse hair stood on end. Of course, he loved his work too, which as, as you know, uh, began after, uh, his, his, after he graduated from Western with a 17-year stint at the Courier. And then he went on to be a freelance photographer. He, he never looked as natural to me as he did with his Nikon pressed up against his face and he had a particularly uh, plastic nose and he could just, uh, he could make that camera just mash his nose down and go right into his face. It looked like part of his body. One experience that Bill and I had when he was in the last stages of melanoma sums up to me who he was and how he saw his life. Late one Saturday night in March before he died in May, we had had to rush to the emergency room. Of course, on Saturday night, there were great crowds in the emergency room and there was no curtained cubicle left for Bill. So the nurses put him on a gurney in the hallway just outside a small room where a newborn baby boy was being treated. When suddenly that baby began to wail, that primal cry that only tiny babies can make, Bill's face suddenly cleared of its own pain and lighted up with a big smile. He said, my life is ending, his life is just beginning. I only hope that his life can be just half as full and rich as mine has been. I am honored to get to speak here today for Michelle, his daughter, and Doug Bartholomew, her husband, who is also a graduate of Western and was a great quarterback here uh, in the late 70s and for Bill's other children who could not be here today, Charlotte and Hope, and Bill's son, Aaron. Bill would be so deeply honored and unspeakably touched that his beloved Western bestowed this greatest honor on him. So on behalf of his children and from myself too, thank you, thank you for this recognition that, that his work is indeed lasting and that it reflects brightly on the school that equipped him for his accomplishments. I think Bill knows about this and is very, very glad. Thank you very much.